I'm in Singapore today at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore. And our guest is Dr. Wu Shun, Associate Professor here at the LKY School and the Director of the Institute of Water Policy. Professor Wu is the co-author with Robbie Perry at the Asian Development Bank of a new paper entitled Public-Private Partnerships in Water and Sanitation in India, Lessons from China. And he's agreed to talk to us today about his paper. So, Shun, it's great to be here. Thank you very much Thank uh, you. for agreeing to talk to us. Maybe we could start and uh, you could tell us about the India story. Why has India been so reluctant to involve private sector expertise uh, in its water and sanitation sector? Okay. Um, there are several reasons why uh, Indian government has been um, reluctant uh, in more development in PPP in water. Um, the first reason uh, is that uh, there's a generally a public perception perception and that the water as a, a fundamental public good um, is unsuited um, for private sector involvement. Uh, this is, uh, has been uh, widely held uh, in India among the NGO and general public and so forth. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, in the past, uh, there are uh, a few uh, failed uh, attempt and PPP project, uh, you know, proposed project. You mean in uh, India, or are you talking about the global experience? Uh, in India, uh, were abandoned um, because because this concern. So 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 that's uh, kind of one reason. And the second reason is that uh, the uh, private sectors uh, um, are not keen um, in bidding um, PPP contract. Right? Um, there are perhaps you know. Many reasons for that too, because one one of the reason uh, is that uh, uh, the price uh, is generally pretty low across different uh, cities in India, and the second reason is because of the weaknesses in uh, a governance uh, mechanisms such as uh, regulatory capacity uh, as well as uh, uh, the uh, uh, dispute resolution uh, mechanisms are in general uh, quite weak. Uh, so this is actually uh, create. Uh, a lot of risk uh, for private sectors uh, to be involved uh, in water sectors. Right? And the, the third reason, I think, uh, also quite important, um, is that uh, if you look at current experiences, um, the existing PPP uh, in India, water sector, um, have oftentimes linked with uh, substantial um, public funding. Right. So uh, this is kind of ironic because the uh, government want to bring in private sector in to um, reduce the financing gap, um, but to the uh, public sector operator, uh, what they are most interested in is the availability of public financing for such projects. So how does, how does that work? I mean, they, they keep the prices low in the PPPs and the, and the government provides a, the money directly to the the private operator to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. That's the uh, the uh, underlying thinking uh, of of uh, their approach. But uh, largely, that has uh, not been able to uh, get enough private sector players interested. What about um, uh, public sector? Uh, I mean, private sector players from other countries. I mean, like Manila Water or somebody. Would they be interested? Do you think in bidding on? Well, I think they are would be as reluctant as uh, uh, domestic uh, private sectors in India, um, because I think uh, uh, if a you know, foreign company come into a new country, they potentially uh, they will uh, be confronted uh, with uh, other set of uh, uncertainties, uh, and, you know, such as uh, unfamiliarity with the political systems and the political structure. Mm -hmm. And so forth. So, so, so I think that uh, the the foreign players, a foreign investor, uh, will uh, will be very cautious as well. Mm -hmm. Can we switch to China? Okay. Um, and uh, uh, you tell a story in your in your paper of China being very persistent mm -hmm. in overcoming failure uh, in involving private sector operators. How do you explain that China was so per persistent? Why didn't they sort of back off from their initial? Failures. Okay, um, we we have to uh, first remember that uh, um, China uh, is uh, a, a country uh, where you know one party uh, have ruled countries uh, for a long time. It's a, essentially a one party uh, a system. Right? And so that in the Chinese government, uh, they can uh, afford uh, to learn from mistake and stay with their chosen policy. Uh, this may not happen in other uh, political environment, which is highly contested, because uh, uh, the incumbent 
may only have one shot. And uh, if mistakes is made, they have to move on. Mm -hmm. um, but this is not necessarily to be the cases uh, uh, in uh, in China. Right? So um, the second reason is that uh, uh, within China, uh, this is no fundamental resistances to private sector involvement in water. Right? The policymakers believe that uh, uh, the initial uh, failures uh, in engaging private sectors uh, are mainly due to technical reasons, which can be fixed um, with uh, technical solutions. Right? And the third reason um, is that uh, uh, the ability to attract um, foreign direct investment or private sector investment is often a key uh, performance indicator for local government official uh, looking for promotion and the career advancement. Interesting, yeah. Um, let me ask you, one of the things that I uh, remember uh, reading in the paper was how initially the private uh, firms from abroad came into China, but they were gradually replaced by the local Chinese uh, firms. Um, I guess two questions here. What, what did the local Chinese firms remember, I mean, what did they learn from mm -hmm. from this? And who were they? I mean, what were they doing before they moved into the municipal water sector? Well, I'm afraid that there they aren't uh, uh, too much, you know, le lesson they learned from uh, the uh, foreign uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, partners. And uh, the reason is that uh, um, water sector, unlike uh, many other industries, uh, uh, the innovations in financing and operating uh, the businesses actually quite limited. I, and actually, uh, I uh, know of you know some uh, anecdotes uh, where the the local partner were quite surprised to learn that uh, little was changed after a foreign partner took over the operation because. Uh, they expect to see big changes, but in fact, that little changes uh, happen. Right? So, uh, I think that's actually, uh, in a way, perhaps inspired the confidence of the local company uh, to get into uh, these businesses. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, if if I have to mention um, one lesson, um, perhaps you know, from uh, their experiences uh, in learning um, from the foreign uh, partner, is perhaps that water businesses can be lucrative um, mm -hmm. because uh, of uh, its uh, uh, steady steady demand uh, as well as uh, the you know, good cash revenue. flow. Yeah. Right. So you think that the local uh, Chinese firms have been making good money in, in this? They've been a profitable? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, they are in it for making money. There's, there's no doubt about it. There are, um, you know, three type of uh, local companies uh, now actively involved in uh, water sector in China. Uh, one type uh, is the uh, uh, investment uh, company affiliated with the uh, municipal government. Um, because of economic growth, uh, a lot of the municipal government uh, have large influx uh, of uh, taxes and the public money, and they actually uh, are actively looking for areas to invest. So, so, uh, so that is the first type, um, uh, uh, you know, company with with a lot of resources, a lot of investment. The second type uh, are the privatized water utility that used to work with foreign partners. Right. Um, for for there's a group of you know uh, companies uh, that they're in Shenzhen in Beijing. So after uh, the experience of, of working with foreign partners, uh, they actually are uh, now become more aggressive in I expanding their operations in other uh, municipalities. Uh, the third uh, uh, type of company uh, are dedicated operators. So they don't have um, investment of their own, but uh, typically uh, they team with investment company I mentioned earlier uh, to bid on various projects. Mm -hmm. so, so there are also a number of firms quite successful to be uh, dedicated operators. Mm. So one of the points you make in your paper is the importance of separating out the tariff policy from the ownership of the, uh, the management and ownership of the of the water utility, um, how did China do that? I mean, how did they how did they separate out this issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, achieve really achieve, achieve the the tariff increases. Yeah, if you look at Indian experiences, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, a lot of proposed PBP project uh, were 
abandoned um, because of, of the public resistance. And uh, the main reason for such resistance is actually the linkage between the price increase and the private sector involvement. There's generally a uh, uh, public perception uh, that there's a causal relationship between uh, private sector involvement and the price increase. That's actually uh, its main obstacles uh, for India and also in many other developing countries in involving uh, private sector uh, in, in water and sanitation service. Right? So if you look at uh, uh, the China's experiences, um, China has been able to carry out uh, uh, tariff reform uh, without the involvement of uh, private sectors. Uh, the major reform on tariff actually were uh, implemented um, before the large influx of the uh, 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 the investment uh, from the private sector. So the so the private investors haven't been perceived as the ones responsible for the tariff increases. Right. Yeah. So uh, uh, politically, uh, it is actually uh, make the tariff reform uh, more acceptable uh, if it's not linked with. Uh, a private sector involvement, right? Because uh, uh, the tariff reform should have its own rationale and the logic, right? Tariff reform uh, can be conducted uh, due to uh, the requirement for cost recovery or the desire uh, to improve uh, uh, economic efficiencies. The uh, that there's no need to connect the tariff reform directly uh, with the ownership of the uh, utility. Is, it, is there a lesson there for India? What kind of advice would you have for Indian water leaders on how to do this? Yeah, I think in many developed countries, including India, um, uh, the uh, I think uh, one of the goal uh, of engaging um, private sector is that uh, uh, after the private sector is brought in, then the government can push the tariff reform. Um, so basically, that government expect uh, uh, that something that uh, they are willing, not unwilling, uh, to push, uh, such as uh, uh, tariff increases, uh, they would expect the private sector to push this agenda for them. Uh, I I think largely this is uh, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, government should actually uh, carry out the tariff reform um, before. Uh, they are looking for uh, investors uh, from private sectors. Mm -hmm. Another point you make in the paper is that um, China uh, was slow to develop its regulatory capacity. Um, could you tell us something about this? I mean, um, why was why was it slow, mm -hmm. and you know, what lessons have um, or what advice would you have for China now to build up its regulatory capacity? Mm -hmm. So uh, China used to be a um, planning economy, right? uh, so that uh, uh, the policymaker in China are quite comfortable uh, with managing uh, state-owned enterprises. Right? Uh, they don't have experiences actually in regulating industries with the presence of uh, natural monopoly, uh, such as waters. So, so this is uh, in large, largely re reflect uh, the inexperiences uh, in um, regulation. Right? On the other hand, they also have an unrealistic expectation of uh, what market and the competition can bring. Right? So, 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 so these two factors, uh, lack of experience in regulation and uh, uh, unrealistic expectation uh, about market, uh, uh, actually leads to uh, a, a systematic neglectance uh, of uh, uh, regulations uh, in China. Um, but I think that China have to uh, learn um, from experiences uh, of uh, other countries um, because uh, uh, in order to uh, sustain the development uh, in industries uh, with a natural monopoly, uh, the uh, regulatory capacities uh, is essential. There, there's uh, you know uh, uh, no time for uh, China actually to delay uh, this development. Well, thank you so much. It's been really interesting um, uh, hearing your story. Do you have any other um, advice for our students about things to read in the uh, water privatization area? I mean, besides your paper, that we're already we're already reading your paper. What else would you recommend to understand this discourse over privatization? 
Yeah, there are many uh, materials on this topic uh, because uh, of a high level of interest. Uh, and two uh, comes to mind uh, right now. Uh, is uh, 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 Karen Baker's uh, uh, books um, privatizing water um, that's actually uh, provide a, a very comprehensive uh, discussion about a different viewpoint on the private sector involvement in water uh, another uh, very interesting material uh, is a World Bank publication um, public private partnership in water uh, written by Philip Morin. Mm -hmm. um, this also provide uh, an overview of uh, the recent development in uh, PPPs in water sectors. Great. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Yeah.